With that being said, welcome to the House of Common show. The boys are in the building. We are so happy that you have decided to watch another couple of segments, another episode, or listen to another episode with us. Uh, for those of you who are watching, you can find us on YouTube. Uh, make sure to search the words House of Common show. And when you find us, like the, the video that you've watched, subscribe to the channel, and then share that with your friends uh, so that they can watch the channel as well. Also, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section because we love to be able to interact with you, whether you agree with our takes or not to be able to hang out with you and spend time with you that way is always a good thing if you are a listener make sure to to download our, our podcast on either apple podcast or spotify leave a five-star review and also leave comments there because that helps us grow in uh, the rankings want to give a shout out to the young buck o'shea who's not with us tonight with that being said let's get it started oh, no. we have heard multiple things um, um, among ourselves on, on the topic that we are going to be talking about right now um, called colorism. We have heard that you are you might be too dark, you might be too light. We've heard of light skin privilege. We've heard of light skin energy. These sort of things. We're going to talk about the idea of colorism, that that, that that topic actually affects the black community, actually affects black people across the spectrum of color, whether you are too light or too dark there's certain features the forehead the cheekbones the nose that go that, that are there regardless of and so we want to talk a little bit about what colorism is how it has affected us on this show and what we can learn about it so the first question is this what are some colorism terms that we have been used to to hearing or knowing so i'm going to toss it uh to the man who if you didn't know this has played basketball his entire life. <laughs> um, he actually was, was scouted uh, by multiple teams. But he chose. Ball is his favorite sport. He chose. He's like, you know what, guys? I have other things I would like to do. I'll, I'll come back to you later on. Uh, Adam Hoskins, the yes. basketball god. Yes. Uh, what are some colors and terms that you have heard? Um, light skin privilege. Uh, the blacker the bear, the sweeter the juice. Amen. <laughs> uh, of course, you're going to say that one, Adam. I take exception to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think there's a myriad of uh, of terms stuff that that just refer to um, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. You get it. Sorry. Yeah, there's a myriad of terms uh, that just refer to uh, the the lightness and darkness of skin, as though um, as though the lighter skins are better. And so when you when you talk about something like light skin privilege, you know uh, it's that uh, they 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 would be more desirable for uh, either you know you know for a spouse or anything like that, or someone someone would be considered more attractive. I th when I think of terms of of colorism. You know, I, I think of uh, it's almost it's almost like a caste system, if you will. Mm. Uh, you think of the Indian caste system and, and how uh, it's not as strong in terms of it, it doesn't trickle in socially. There aren't things built in place for that, but it is a subculture uh, that kind of runs through um, you know people of color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Uh as somebody who is biracial, who would be considered as light-skinned and have light-skinned energy at times. Um, you live in this ambiguous space, though, right? Because, you know, sometimes you're called mulatto, and the frustration of that is where that term derives from, um, which is like half horse, half donkey. A lot of people don't realize that it's such a derogative term uh, to communicate to somebody who has lighter skin. Um, and then, yeah, like I, I got to admit, as, as somebody who would be considered as light skinned as a child, I was super, super, super encouraged to lean into that. Right. You had the different hair. You had the different features. Um, they loved it. You weren't too black, but it also came with the you're not black enough. Right. And um, it's frustrating a little bit as, as I've gotten older because we've had this conversation a little bit before, but you're just black at some point. Right. And you lose some of that uh, shine, let's say. Um, but yeah, the mulatto would be one of them. Um, if you're too light skin, I've heard bright skin be used. I wish O'Shea was here. Not that I would consider him that. Uh, but, you know, I feel very alone <laughs> in this group chat right now. So uh, I'm going to hand it over, you know. <laughs> no, well, I, I think that there's there's, um, you know, 
there are multiple memes and and things that get sh- sh- sent around. Like there's one on on social media right now where uh, a normal person does something and then a light skin d- does it, and there's a certain suave idea that is that is connected to being light skinned. Uh, and we've talked about this um, separate from this episode, where in terms of um, marketability that somebody who is a lighter shade of, of of brown might be able to get a better foot into a door than somebody who is a darker shade of brown. We You can describe it as the Beyonce, Kelly Rowland syndrome. Which one is more marketable? Which one is more popular? Which one is more important to the idea of blackness? Uh, is it the, you know, we have, what, what did Kanye say? We got the light-skinned girls. We got Kelly Rowland's, that, that sort of, I, I, of idea. So... In light of that, where does colorism come from? Reem, walk us through that. Yeah, so first off, before I even speak to that, I'll even say a few other terms that have kind of come out. Like some of the things you'll hear is stuff like um, a girl is uh, light-skinned but has coarse hair. So she uh, she has hair that's like a black girl, and when it's communicated, it's it's actually not a good thing. Or, um, she's, or I've heard stuff like she's pretty for a dark-skinned girl um, is another thing that I've heard. Or... Uh, even the opposite of like when it comes to the hair is her hair is is too nappy. She's got to get get it straightened. And the, and the thing is, when we're talking about where do, where does colorism come from, uh, what what black people or people don't understand is um, it, it obviously it, it 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 comes from slavery. And slavery lasted for hundreds of years, and a lot of things were ingrained in us as a people, um, and we don't realize that. Um, a lot of the things that happened during that time, um, we've now passed on a lot of that mentality into even our present generations. Uh, and one of those things is colorism. Um, so back in those times, masters uh, preferred, um, or the masa, if you want to call them that, preferred lighter skinned slaves to work um, closer to them within the house. And so ultimately what would happen is other slaves who were darker skinned either looked up to the lighter skin. Uh, black slaves or had a disdain uh, for those uh, uh, that were lighter skin. Um, and that kind of brought about uh, jealousy. Um, so when it comes to like the origin of the lighter skin black person, and this is war- even more what I want to speak to, um, we got to understand that historically, when Africans were brought into America as, sl- as slaves, they were actually the same complexion. And that's something that we don't fully understand. Like they were actually originally uh, all of darker skinned, uh, had coarse textured hair, had, you know, African features. But what happened is as they were slaves in slavery, um, they were constantly or oftentimes being raped um, by their slave masters, which created what was called and 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 um, uh, Calvin made reference to it the whole culture of the mulatto population, which was half white, half black. And then sometimes a mulatto girl would be raped uh, and she would then become quarter black and so on and so on. And so uh, they started having within the black culture, within the black slave community, we started having different um, um, uh, different uh, variations of colors, colored skin. Um, and um and oftentimes it was viewed that the lighter you are, um, the better it was because you had the opportunity to be able to get closer to Masa uh, or master, the master slave or the slave master, sorry. Um, and it's not to say that you wouldn't have uh, like slave jobs, but those jobs were uh, a little easier. And the ones that were darker skin had the, the tougher jobs and and which even translated oftentimes to a shorter lifespan because it was tougher and so colorism in in in, in my opinion has now translated into present time where a lot of that same mindset uh, has crept into our culture where we view those that are lighter skinned um, as being uh, as being better we also have within present culture uh, we've allowed what media has told us to be uh, what is better. So that same spirit that happened within slave culture is still even present within the media, where even within media, you'll see, you know, uh, white culture, the straighter hair and, 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 and lighter features, that's more prettier. And and even Chase, who spoke to it a second ago in terms of just even, um, you know, what is more marketable. And oftentimes what is more marketable is lighter skinned. Yeah, like I'm, I'm 
you can't even speak to the rest of what you said. You took a lot of what I was going to say there. Green, so S- sorry, I, Jonesy. I, I, I don't need to say much more. Papa, um, don't preach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that word colorism, it was actually first coined. It wasn't first coined until 1982 mm. um, by mm. a, a lady uh, named Alice Walker. I believe her name was. And she was just talking about how mostly, you know, colorism in terms of us looking at other people in a different way was actually from more within than it was from without. Yeah. You know, you have the racism from within, but you, the colorism was more from, I'm uh, sorry, without it was the racism, but colorism is more from within of black people ranking each other. Yeah. And that came because of slavery and just the infiltration and just the, you know, the, the brainwashing of things of making people better. But we see it all throughout society. So for example, places like, South Africa still run it like that. You know, I know many South Af- Africans and have talked to them and I've actually asked them that question. And they're like, oh, totally. Like the lighter you are, the better you are in society, the better you are off in society, the better you're well taken care of in society. And so, you know, and I don't know if any of you guys have actually seen that video before where they have kids looking at, you know, the black baby and the white baby and saying, mm-hmm. who's prettier? Who's right. going to be Yeah. Like yeah. Well, I, no. And who's going to be all this other stuff? And so, you know, even through history, yes, it's been told, but we're also just perpetuating it in everything that we do yeah. nowadays because we're saying the lighter you are, the well better off you're going to be. Well, Jonesy, I, you know, I was reading an article earlier about Lupita Nyong. Uh, oh, man, I messed up her last name. Lupita, she was talking about an art in an interview. You're not even going to try. No, I'm not. Gonna <laughs> you're not even going to try. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Just Peter keep it up, He was smooth with it. Kind of hoffy coats, right? Yeah, yeah. You just, you know what I mean. You just need it's like when you read from the Old Testament, and you're preaching, and you get it when that. Peter Nyong'o. So yeah, she was doing an interview with the BBC, and she actually said that colorism is the daughter of racism. When yes. you think about it, like yeah. you know, what I mean, and it sort of comes from the same same sort of thing. And she was talking about some of the experiences that she had. And uh, Jonesy, that just came up because you talked about some of the things that go on in Africa. Uh, not to pick on Africa or anything like that, but I've heard some of those exact same things. Where, where the closer you are to being white, the better. Which is which is strange to hear that coming out of like, you know, the motherland, right? <laughs> like that's that's well, mind boggling. Africa's a continent. Just just remember. There's like- I know, I know, but there it. <laughs> Pretty much envelops the whole con. Shut up! I passed geography. Oh, listen, night. listen, listen. <laughs> Hold on, legit. You're surprised, Steph, because I, I'm not surprised to hear yeah. that they can't come out of the colonized world. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. I think, but I, th- I think you guys are all a I little narrow-minded. Yeah, Colorism we're, we're predates. 400 years of the transatlantic slave trade colorism has existed in every culture for as long as we know in human history yes before before white people yes, are, are believed to have even existed if you depending on some historians that colorism was found in ancient egypt and colorism is found in every single culture all around the world whether they were colonized by britain or not we we feel the the tensions and and as Lupita would say, maybe the the child of colorism in our context in being in North America as black men, but this goes far, far, far beyond uh, some of the narrow history that we've learned in our in our high school experience. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those things that when you look at it, it's like places like uh, South Korea, where you go to. Uh, the mall and you go to a, a skincare store and you can buy cream to bleach your skin. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's one of those things like uh, it's like that is like one of the leading uh, topics. It's uh, within a lot of uh, uh, Asian communities. Uh, mm-hmm. It's the whole thing is that the lighter you are, the less work you've done in the field, yeah. which mm-hmm. means you are of a higher status mm-hmm. yeah, it, it has, uh, and so yeah. uh it's i would say it it's it's in the midst of uh pretty much almost every culture that we get and it's like in north america it also kind of takes an inverse within white society because we make fun of the person that is pale mm-hmm. and uh it's one of those things that when we look at it uh you have this pursuit of um 
of that that golden orange glow mm -hmm. uh and it's like we have a representation that almost we are introduced to on a daily basis uh and then you i've also had conversations where it's it's like white people are talking about how they wish that they were black because of how our our skin uh works uh mm -hmm. especially it's like they they want that that darker color uh and it's like it's it's a weird dynamic the blacker the berry the sweeter the juice okay relax the fun but no but no but no tim <laughs> makes, tim makes a good tim makes a good point um i i've you know like i've heard someone say to me as very recently man like you know the thing about darker skinned people is that they don't it doesn't seem like they age at all it's like no i i, I do like I have wrinkle lines, I look, yeah. I get old, but, but there's, but there's, a, there's a, there's a, this weird thing in terms of, in terms of colorism, that like on some spots, well, I'm like the darker I am, the more I might be prone for trouble. But then there's this also this idea of advantage where like, whoa, but but I, but I look cool and I have a certain thing and oh my goodness, I have mixed kids. Well, they're going to be, oh well, every, yeah. I mean, how many times have or we, we don't and, sunburn? We own some well, it, me there's a lot of a lot of fetishing of of darker right? skin and some well, and, of the sexual and, thoughts and I, and I would, that and I would say this that. too I would say say that to, to that point there's a lot of a lot of people who enjoy the culture of colorism but they don't enjoy the conversation that goes beyond it they don't enjoy that part when it actually becomes a talking point they enjoy the cultural part. They enjoy the fetish part of it. They enjoy talking about it in terms of what they enjoy, what they don't. You know, you, you know, um, there were a, a number of different signs during the Black Lives Matter rallies and protests of certain people, namely women, describing why they were cheering for Black Lives to Matter. Uh, mm -hmm. Very problematic. You you can Google that yourself. But very in terms good. of their 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 <laughs> fetish and their their love for for black Find men. It on in 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 wow. particular, and and many of us on 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 this show know um, full disclosure, um, we have mixed race kids, and we've heard the stories of how beautiful mixed kids are, and oh, you must be so happy that they're that they're both and Calvin and if if the young Buck O'Shea was on the show as well, he'd be able to explain like the challenge, like that's cute from like ages zero to four or five, but then that becomes a challenge later on when you're trying to figure out your identity, because mm -hmm. as much as you try to straighten your hair on one end or wear baggy clothes on the other end you still have the nose you still got the cheekbones you still have the you still have all of those features that will that are mm -hmm. black but bart mm -hmm. to, to, to you um in terms of the idea of colorism where where have you seen the advantages and disadvantages when it comes to the conversation yeah i think it's definitely an issue of um identity so in some respects, the darker you are, the realer you are, like especially in black culture, you know, if you say you want to be like Ethiopian or something like that, but you're, you're trying to lighten your skin to be like, yo, you're selling out, you know what I mean? You're not, you're not being true to your culture. We are dark skinned people. In the same way you see it in India, people are trying to lighten their skin. In certain places in Asia, they are lightening their skin. They're always covered up in the sun. So advantages are then get played based on social constructs so if we have a social construct where people are more appreciated like you said chase marketed easier to market based on the lightness of their skin or they would put different terms around it they would say it is more appealing to a broader based uh of people group so that we can have better ads run towards it more people would identify in that um, in that uh, notion or in that depiction. This is where you see advantage versus disadvantage. The same way you have people who have to adjust their names on their resumes, um, people then begin to inherit not just the looks, but also the traits of the, what I would, I've been calling this since for the neutral zone. You know what I mean? Like if neutral is always um, for the sake of current modern Western culture, white people. So if that's what neutral is, and we're trying to acclimatize because the culture of today almost wants us to acclimatize into that neutral color where we speak a certain way and we act a certain way 
And that's where you start to see people starting to straighten their hair and to perm their hair, especially in black culture. And you see even people like Malcolm X and black women doing things to their hair to make it more approachable in the culture of the day. So there are definite um, uh, benefits and there are also hindrances. If you are a model and you are of darker skin or in, I'm sorry, of medium skin, medium toned skin, that's something that is probably going to be more problematic because you're not, like Calvin said, fetishized in the same way where darker skin and certain modeling aspects in fashion, high fashion, they want that type of contrast for the clothing and all that type of stuff. And so if you're in the middle, you can get left behind. And if you're too light, you may get more opportunities. And if you're too dark, you may have no opportunities. So it all depends on where the position you're in can then determine the type of benefits that you can then see. And it's uh, on a lighter note, no pun intended. Womp, womp, womp. I can't With believe. the Maple Leafs hat. Oh, oh my goodness. Terrible. Go Leafs go. Um, it's, it's also, it's, uh, one of those things like growing up, uh, uh, I would, uh, and I still do have, uh, friends that are of, uh, the lighter complexion and, um, it was always interesting. It's like, uh, for those that were of the lighter complexion, who got the attention, uh, from, uh, the opposite sex, uh, it was one of those things that it was like, it's like they could be an absolute horrible person. And I would say that they weren't because they were my friends and they still are my friends. Uh, but <laughs> it's, horrible it's, people it's, couldn't be your friends is what you're saying. <laughs> oh, I, I have some people that, uh, no, don't, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Too. Don't, don't fall for Bart's trap. Don't fall for Bart's trap. Don't fall for that. You know, it's too easy. Stop it, Bart. Behave. Continue. Tim. Uh, but it's, it's one of those things that like, uh, it's like when we think about it, the light skin privilege, um, it's uh, something in which it's like we walk into a room and who is going to get more attention, me or them? Uh, it's it's one of those things that it's like, truthfully, it's, uh, it's the benefits of uh, being uh, on some level fetishize uh because it's like it's like oh but it's like their their skin tone their skin co color is uh, something that is unlike anything that we typically see um and it has that a benefit and then also it's like and we've talked about it here it's like walking down the street in the night uh who are you more likely to be afraid of um it's uh it's either someone that is of a darker complexion or someone that is of uh, the lighter uh, complexion. Dark skin uh, man with a do-rag is scary. Light skin brother yeah. is cute. Yeah. No, it's it's true. Uh, y'all y'all are trying to y'all are trying to get me to jump in on this. Y'all speaking <laughs> You guys are speaking from some incredible bias because you don't have the dichotomy. No, you don't but, have both sides of what you would call a light skin privilege. I look at it as a curse. Because I look at you and I look at, like, have I had opportunities that maybe you haven't? Likely. Have I relished and exercised some of those benefits? Definitely. Because I feel I have to exercise it for the things that I lack in what I don't get in terms of all black spaces, in the angst that people have towards me. So when they see me in a room and they feel like I'm going to get the thing that they deserve, they are aggressive towards me in that space. That there are a whole different life experience that you may be jaded um, and say some things from from a lofty space, but again, we're still black, and yeah. and there's there's pain on both sides. So don't gang up on me. Don't gang up on us because we we wish in a lot of ways we just looked like you because then there wouldn't be some of the other issues that we have to experience and have to navigate in knowing I'm getting this opportunity to speak. I'm getting um, this girl because they can't, because I'm a little closer to them um, than my friends and my peers and my own family members, right? So there, there's, there's tension that we live with too. 
and it's it's something that I would uh, I I feel for you on that level because um, it's uh, it's one of those things like uh, it's like I think about it, it's like if I am to marry someone that isn't black, it's like there's this tension uh, that is there because uh, it's like my my children uh, they are both and but in a certain space they are only mm. what their father is uh and so it is definitely something that it's like uh i get and uh i feel you on that and it's something that i can't fully understand uh but it is uh, definitely something where uh it is it is a curse and a blessing uh but it's it's a double edged sword and it's one of those things that I would say that uh, uh, for uh, people that are of my uh, skin tone and darker, uh, that we have to do a better job to be able to uh, make sure that we aren't uh, throwing any angst or uh, ignorance uh, back at you because it's like I can't uh, begin to understand because it's like for me, it's like I'm actually really mixed. It's like people look at me and they're like, okay, yeah, he's black. But it's uh, my grandfather is half Indian, half black. Uh, my dad, I don't even know what my dad is. My dad, I would say he <laughs> like <laughs> it's like it's it's true. It's like my dad would fall into the racial ambiguous uh, dynamic because there was white, there was black uh, from uh, his mom, my grandmother's side, and then his dad who is Indian and is black. Uh, and it's one of those things that it's like. He is there in that environment. Uh, <laughs> uh, and well, so it's, <laughs> it's, it's one of those there. things that it's like I can't begin to understand. It's like because no matter what environment I, I work in, it's like I am black, regardless of what is in my genes and my DNA. It's like I am full-fledged uh, black. So, so... In light of this conversation between Calvin and Tim, I, I, I go back to this interview that um, this small, really unknown rapper from Toronto, Ontario, uh, Canada, by the name of Drake. You probably haven't heard of him before. You should couple, find a couple of his, his songs. He's an indie rapper, whatever. Uh, he was on this this interview, and he was talking about um, about being a light skinned man. His his father's black, his mother's white, and he and he mentioned. I was kidding about Drake, by the way. He's the biggest artist in the world right now and he talks about he talks about how he feels that there are certain times where people don't listen to him talking about black issues because of, of the lightness of his skin whereas if he was as dark as say somebody like Kendrick Lamar who we would all automatically kind of gravitate to as a voice for black people he would say like I would probably get more shine there but he says you know like but if you look at me look at how I identify look at how I look at how I talk look at how i act i identify as black and so tim i i agree with you like there's certain spaces where no matter what you are in among our community black community we might say okay well this person's light skin this person's mixed this person's that but outside of that world you're black and that's that's pretty well all that all that there is and then we and we haven't even got into i'm going to pass this to cream in a second uh, to kind of close off the, uh, to close off a little bit of the segment, but we haven't even talked about this idea for black women. We've mentioned black women a little bit, but we have this one area as black men, but there are black women who have mm -hmm. to deal with the idea of what colorism means for them. And if they are too dark for black men or too light for like all these sort of things that they have to. And so if you're a, a, a black woman uh, and if you watch these videos, please leave a comment in our in our in our YouTube. Leave a comment on, on our Facebook, our social media to let us know what your experience is like in dealing with the idea of being being a woman of color and what colorism has been like been like for you. But in, in light of in light of all of this, how does that get in the way of progress for for our, our culture? Kareem, what do you think? Yeah, it's it's interesting and, and honestly it kind of sucks that um within the black culture um it's one of the few races there are others like south asian uh culture or even in the indigenous the indigenous. indigenous people i'm sorry <laughs> i always struggle to say that word for some reason um but we're the only ones who have like this these differences in shades 
Um, and and the reality is is the where it originates from um, for for these cultures a lot of times it sucks. Uh, with that being said, um, what happens is because of these uh, the, the colorism that takes takes place and the caste systems that we've literally allowed ourselves to kind of carry. Uh, really, I think because we allowed ourselves to be mentally enslaved, we may not be physically enslaved, but we were we've allowed ourselves to be mentally enslaved. It, it, it's 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 taken away our sense of self identity and self worth. You know, if I'm dark skinned, I you know I'm this, I'm that, and 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 certain types of people will will like me if I if I act a certain way. If I'm light skinned, the same thing, but in different ways. Um, and so, in terms of the progress, it just it it, it creates um, friction within our own culture where we don't just all build each other up, where we don't all see each other as um, having either the same struggles or lack there of struggles. Um, and the reality is I think we all, depending on your light, lighter skin or darker skin, we all have different struggles and, and within the culture itself, and, it, and you kind of touched on it a little bit, uh, Chase, in referencing Drake, um, it's tough to really find out where you fit in because of uh, within the culture, how people view you because of your, your, the shades, the shades that you, that you have. And, um, and ultimately that's the, the fruit of it is uh, the caste system that we have allowed to kind of be portrayed within our, our own uh, people. Yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult, right? Because on one hand you have, um, you know, you talk about progress for culture and, and it's, it really is like crabs in a bucket, right? Yeah. Um, we're trying to see people succeed. Um, and we keep finding reasons to pull down. Yeah. However, the problem is that colorism is so tied to individual preference, right? Like we can't, we can't tell someone you should like darker skinned girls because it's better for our culture. It's your taste, right? In terms of women or in terms of whatever it is, right? That's like, good. So it's, it's, it's difficult it's difficult to assess and to properly and to, to see eradication of that because like I, I to be quite honest, I do not know how you would approach that because it's so tied to um, to procreation, it's so tied to choosing the mate, it's so tied to personal preference of who you you know what I mean, like how you how you value people personally, um, and, and who you see as um, as as potential so i i the the only thing i would ask in regards to that is like uh, those preferences that we get like i'm not saying that this is every time but where does that originate from sometimes the preferences that we have yeah they they originate from something that is not necessarily even our like quote unquote maybe natural like some of the preferences that we have say even as within the black culture like some people actually want to have their say we're talking about females in case you were referencing females you know we want to see them have straightened hair but their natural hair cut their their natural hair, hair texture isn't straight and so when we're talking about progress what's now in terms of what's happened now and hindering uh progress within our culture is that we say that we don't want to stay true to our natural selves how god has actually created us and we want to now present ourselves in a way because of the preferences of culture or people within culture and those preferences a lot of times has come because of what's been portrayed or what's been kind of uh, uh, placed within their mindsets to think that this is pretty or this is not so pretty. And so what that does now, it, it's, it hinders our ability to really understand who are we as black people, you know, and I think, and, and I said it already, it, it, it it makes us lose our self-worth or our self-identity in recognizing who we are. Now, yes, again, like you said, there's preferences, absolutely. But the question I always ask when there's preferences is, or the question that we got to ask ourselves sometimes is, is, where did those preferences come from? Where did it originate from? Yeah. Yeah. And I guess the, like in terms of immediate progress for our people, the question of where the preference comes from becomes less relevant as you're trying to structure for people in terms of 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 a value of beauty right like a value of 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 what is good we spoke about that before you know I, I believe i touched on it in terms of saying that like this like sometimes the standard of what we have in modern north america 
as it pertains to colorism right now is 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 white white people right but how do we in this generation or the next fight colorism not just on a macro scale of like not just theoretically of like yes this is the black identity this is what needs to be black but now how do we get those people who understand what it means to be black to now choose black yeah some of it is education a lot of it's representation i think uh black star did a song called brown skin lady and they uh they sampled gil scott gil scott heron and he was you know my conditioning has been conditioned right and it, there's a funny dialogue that starts the song off um chronics very 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 popular reggae artist right now um has a song dedicated saying uh, they never told us that black is beautiful right when we think about the the people who have educated us in terms of art and culture um we work with what they've given us even in our homes, and, and some of you are going to have to figure this out, just having a biracial <laughs> marriage and biracial children. Um, I, I mean, and this, this is just being raw, like there was a girl that I was seeing at one point who was West Indian, who was darker than me, uh, was from a different island than my family would be from. And she was told that the family would not bless our unity because I was too tall, I was too dark, which was odd because they were all darker than me. And the third and the most painful thing was, and he was raised by a white woman. And so he has been conditioned to leave you eventually because how he's received affection and love and the thing that he has seen in terms of what beauty is has been by white women. He's been conditioned and he will one day leave you because you will not amount to the thing that he grew up with. And that, that was very, t- one of the toughest experiences of my life. And uh, it, it, again, it comes to, the, there's this inundation that whatever we're surrounded by is gonna actually affect um, how we pursue, right? And so as we think about progress, as we think about just the, the fall of nationalism and, and the rise of this uh, oversaturation, like we, we are all watching and consuming the same media, uh, what will the next ones look like? Eventually, they're going to look mostly like me. And there's going to be a diluting in some senses and and uh, enhancing in others, depending on what side of the uh, shade scale you side on. And and, and But it's it's going to be like, are, are we going to continue the cycle or are we going to, to break it? And really, um, at the end of the day, is our identity really supposed to be hinged on what looks back at us in the mirror in terms of tone. So there's so much to be able to talk through. Obviously, we could probably do three or four different segments on this topic. Um, But if you want to hear more about this, once again, uh, leave us a comment on our social media page, Search House of Common Show on Insta or Facebook or Twitter. Leave comments there. Follow us there. Leave comments on our YouTube uh, page after watching this video. Uh, leave leave comments on our on our podcast on this topic, especially if you're um, a young black man or woman and you're kind of walking through the identity pieces of this, trying to figure these things out. Know that you're not alone in trying to figure these pieces out about your own life because we're doing the same thing. And to quote uh, the same Drake that I mentioned before, know yourself, know your worth. This is the House of Commons show. <laughs>